led up to Patriarch Carol. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of their righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Your Holiness, the Patriarch. <laughs> I think you could talk to the Patriarch. <laughs> a fervent and sincere prayer can never be a mockery, no matter its form. Therefore, it cannot be said that we jeered or mocked the shrine. What troubles us is that the very shrine which you consider so defiled is so inseparably linked to Putin, who, as you say, returned it to the church. And this is why you perceive our prayer, asking our Holy Mother to drive out those who defile the brightest ideals of human life in Russia and all possible precepts of the Orthodox faith as a mockery of the sacred. In the prayer in question, we expressed our grief, shared with millions of Christians, that you had allowed the church to become a weapon in a dirty political campaign, that you had urged the faithful to vote for a person whose actions are far removed from God's truth. We simply cannot believe the represent representative of the Heavenly Father if he acts against the values for which Christ was crucified on the cross. As said by Pushkin, it is impossible to pray for King Herod, the mother of God, forbids it. You were greatly mistaken when you stated in your sermon that we do not believe in the power of prayer. Without believing in the power of prayer, would we have prayed so desperately and fervently in the temple, even in anticipation of severe persecution which might fall on us and our loved ones? Would we pray in the, face, in the face of all this repressive apparatus of earthly power which buys its time to avenge itself against anyone who takes a stand on behalf of a civil society? The power and truth about prayer did not shame the faithful, for surely the faith of a true believer, like the feelings of Christ, are too deep and universal, too filled with love, to be shamed. Our prayer shamed only Putin and his henchmen. Because of that, three women have been thrown in prison, taken away from their young children, and subjected to daily insults from the state bureaucracy. It is the non-believer, Putin, who through domination and division needs to keep the women in jail. You say that we believe only in propaganda, the media, lies and slander, money and weapons, but we don't have faith in any of those things, which today rival the power of King Herod, on whose behalf you call on us to vote and to pray, and in whose name you associate the prosperity of the Russian soil. First, the pervasive and false propaganda on state television rested of victories of Putin away from the people, and then through outright falsehood, these same forces are trying to assure the people that women and young children should be kept in the custody for violation of the laws of the church. On whose side are propaganda, media, lies, and slander? On whose side is the belief in money? On whose side are the performers are of pussy riot whose lives are close to the asceticism necessary for any creative thinking? Or does the faith in money reside with those who invested the empty values of unprecedented government-sponsored luxuries for any high-ranking man? With those who also have faith in weapons? With those who call for murder in the name of religious feelings? On with those men who hired the armed gang, shouting and wielding their weapons during the raid of March 3rd, on their mission to arrest two women suspected who have been in the temple and of asking the Virgin Mother of God loudly to get rid of Putin. Pussy riot. 